in this section we're going to be looking at how on more things on slope okay there was some things that we talked about with linear functions and slope now there's more things that we're going to look at that deal with slope and in this section we're going to be finding the slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines and also find the functions average rate of change okay all right, we we'll first talk about uh, the relationship with slopes and parallel lines. If two non-vertical lines are parallel, then they have the same slope. And also, if two distinct non-vertical lines have the same slope, then we can say that the lines are parallel. And what parallel means is this. You have two lines. Those two lines do not intersect each other. Okay. So these will be a pair of parallel lines. They're not going to intersect at a point anywhere. And then two distinct vertical lines with undefined slopes are parallel. And of course, with uh, undefined slopes, that means the line is going to be vertical. And if you have two vertical lines, they both have undefined slopes. That means that the two lines aren't going to intersect each other. That means that those lines are parallel. Okay, now let's look at an example that deals with this concept of parallel lines and their relationship with slopes. Let's say we want to write an equation of a line containing, well, passing through the point negative 2, 5, and parallel to the line whose equation is y is equal to 3x plus 1. And you want to express the equation in point-slope form and in slope-intercept form. So we got the point negative 2, 5, and it's going to be parallel to y is equal to 3x plus 1. Okay, so here's what we have. Okay, we have the equation y is equal to 3x plus 1, which means you can see that equation is in slope intercept form, so that means that the slope is 3. And of course, slope intercept form means y is equal to mx plus b. m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept, and the m is the number in front of x. So here, the slope is 3. Okay, if the slope of this line is 3, then the slope that's parallel to it is also going to be 3. Because, we, as we mentioned, parallel lines do have the same slope. Okay, so here we'll use the slope of 3 and the point negative 2, 5. Well, in this case here, x1 is negative 2 and y1 is 5. So our point slope form is simply y minus y1 equal to m times x minus x1. And then we replace the x1, the y1, and the slope in this point slope form. So here we can have y minus y1, which is 5, equals to m, which is 3, times x minus x1, which is negative 2. And of course, x minus negative 2 can be rewritten as x plus 2. So we're going to have y minus 5 is equal to 3, parentheses, x plus 2. That equation is point slope form. And from that, we can go ahead and write the equation in slope-intercept form. Okay, so all I have to do is just finish the rest of this. So if I bring down y minus 5, then that's equal to the right side, I'll use the distributed property. 3 times x, that's 3x, plus 3 times 2, that's 6. And then to get the y by itself, I'm subtracting 5, so I need to add 5 to both sides. So my equation 
in slope intercept form will be y is equal to 3x plus 11. And that y is equal to 3x plus 11 will be the equation of that line passing through the point negative 2, 5, and parallel to y is equal to 3x plus 1. Okay, so that's how you'll solve an equation or write the equation of a line that's passing through a given point and parallel to a given line. Okay. Alright, the next thing we'll look at is the relationship of slopes with perpendicular lines. And it says here, if two non-vertical lines are perpendicular, then the product of their slopes is negative 1. And then the converse of that would be if the product of the slopes of two lines is negative 1, then the lines are perpendicular. So anytime you have perpendicular lines, that means that the product of those two slopes have to be equal negative 1. Or, if you have the product of the slopes of those two lines being negative 1, then that means that your lines are perpendicular. And a horizontal line having a zero slope is perpendicular to a vertical line having undefined slope. Okay. And one thing about slopes and perpendic perpendicular lines is this. One line is perpendicular to another line if and only if one line, one slope, is a negative reciprocal of the slope of another line. Like if I have the slope of two thirds, then I'll take the negative negative reciprocal of that, which will give me negative three over two. So that means that the slope of the second line will have that slope of negative three over two. And we're going to look at an example that is just like that. All right, let's take a look at this one. Here we want to find the slope of any line that is perpendicular to the line whose equation is x plus 3y minus 12 is equal to 0. That's the a part. The b part, you want to write the equation of the line passing through the point negative 2, negative 6, and perpendicular to the line whose equation is x plus 3y minus 12 equal to 0. And here you want to express the equation in general form. And if you recall, general form is ax plus by plus c equal to 0. So we'll first look at part a finding the slope of that line that's perpendicular to the line whose equation is x plus 3y minus 12 is equal to 0. As you can see, it's written in general form. We need to write this in slope intercept form. That, we, that means we need to move the x over to the opposite side and the minus 12 over to the opposite side. So here I'm going to have 3y, and that's equal to now, if I move the x over to the opposite side, it's going to be a negative x. If I move the minus 12 over to the opposite side, it'll be plus 12. Now, in this case here, we got 3y is equal to negative x plus 12. Now, to get the y by itself, we need to divide each and every term by 3. And when we do that, we're going to have y is equal to negative one-third x plus 4. So that's our equation in slope intercept form. y is equal to negative one-third x plus 4. We can identify the slope of this line. And I'm going to label this as m1 because that's the slope of this first line. That's the negative one-third. Now we want the slope that's per want the perpendicular slope. If this is negative one third, then the negative reciprocal of that would be 
pos to 3. We just take the reciprocal of negative of 1 third, that's going to be 3 over 1, which is 3, and then we change the sign. It was negative, so this will have to be positive. So pretty much we've answered part A. And that's finding the slope of, of any line that's going to be perpendicular to the line whose equation is x plus 3y minus 12 is equal to 0. So that's part A right there. The slope that, of any line that's going to be perpendicular to this given line is going to be 3. Now part B, we want to write the equation of the line that's passing through this point, negative 2, negative 6. And perpendicular to the line whose graph, whose equation is x plus 3y minus 12 is, is equal to 0. Well, we've already found the perpendicular slope, which is 3. So we'll use that along with this point, negative 2, negative 6, in our point slope form, which is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. And here x1 is negative 2, y1 is negative 6. So here in this case, here we're going to use y minus y1, which is negative 6, is equal to m. Now here we're going to use the perpendicular slope here. That's 3 times x minus negative 2. Now let's simplify this. So you're going to have y plus 6 is equal to 3 parentheses x plus 2. Now on the right side, I'm going to use the distributive property here. So here we're going to have y plus 6 is equal to 3x plus 6. Okay, now the directions say write this equation in general form. That means we need to get a 0 on one side of the equation. Now I'm going to leave the 3x on this side. That means the y plus 6 will be moved to the opposite side. So here's what I'm going to have. I'm bring down the 3x plus 6. If I move the y over to the opposite side, it's going to be minus y. If I move the plus 6 over to the opposite side, it's going to be minus 6. That way I'll have a 0 on one side of the equation. Now on this side, I got 6 minus 6. That's gone. So I have 0 is equal to 3x minus y. That's the equation in general form. Or you can rewrite this as 3x minus y equal to 0. So that would be the equation written in general form. Okay. All right, the next thing we'll look at is the average rate of change of a function. And of course, the average rate of change of a function, f from, f from x1 to x2, is this. f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now, this is another way of writing a formula for a slope. If you recall, it was y2 minus y1 in the numerator. Here, for a function, we're dealing with f of x2 minus f of x1. What you'll be given is a function, and then you'll be given values for x1 and x2. You have to first find out what f of x1 is and find out what f of x2 is going to be equal to in order to use this average rate of change function. And let's look at one example. Let's say we had this particular situation where you want to find the average rate of change of the function f of x is equal to x to the third from these values. And in part a, you got x1 equal to 0 and x2 equals to 1.
Okay, so here's the function f of x is equal to x cubed. And this is from, and this is going to be part a, where x1 is 0 to x2, which is 1. All right, let's first evaluate f of x1 and f of x2. In this case, our x1 is 0, so we're going to be evaluating f of 0. And our function is f of x is equal to x cubed, and x is 0. So that means we'll replace the x with 0. 0, you'll have 0 cubed, which is 0. And then x2 is 1, so we'll be evaluating f of 1. And here, our function is x cubed, so we replace the x with 1, so you're going to have 1 cubed, which is 1 times 1 times 1, which is simply be 1. So we know f of x1 is going to be 0, and f of x2 is going to be 0, I mean 1. So now we use the average rate of change function, f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. So here, f of x2, we evaluate that to be 1 minus f of x1, which was 0, and that's divided by x2 minus x1, 1 minus 0. But well, this is quite simple. This is going to be 1 divided by 1, which is simply 1. So the average rate of change here for this particular function would be 1. And that's from 0 to 1. All right, let's look at part, <clears throat> look at part B. x1 is 1 to x2 is 2. So here we're finding the average rate, rate of change from x1 being 1 to x2 being 2. Here this is going to be done the same way. Okay. We we'll evaluate f of x1, which is the same as f of 1, which is of course 1 cubed, which is 1. We're still using the function f of x is equal to x cubed. And then f of x2, which is f of 2. And since f of x is x cubed, we're going to be evaluating 2 to the third. And that's 8. Because 2 times 2, that's 4 times another 2 will be 8. So now f of x2 at, well, f of 2 will be 8. Okay, so here we use this rate of change function f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Here f of x2 is 8 and f of x1 is 1. So we have 8 minus 1 divided by x2 minus x1, 2 minus 1. Well, 8 minus 1 is 7, 2 minus 1 is 1, so 7 divided by 1 is 7. So the average rate of change from 1 to 2 uh, for the function f of x equals x to the third will be 7. Okay, and then finally part c, you got x1 being from negative 2 to, well x1 equals negative 2 to x2 equal to 0. Okay, so here we got x1 equal negative 2 to x2 equal to 0. And I'll remind you that we're using a function f of x is equal to x to the third. So in this case here, f of x1 is going to be f of negative 2. And we're, we replace the x with negative 2, so you have negative 2 to the third power. Now, a negative number to an odd power is going to be negative. And it'll be 8. So as you do negative 2 times negative 2, that's 4. 
4 times another negative 2 will be negative 8. And then f of x, 2, that's going to be f of 0, now which we evaluated before. f of 0, that's 0 to the third, which is 0. And then finally, we use our average rate of change function, well, formula, f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. Well, here, f of x2, we found that out to be 0, minus f of x1 is negative 8. So we have 0 minus negative 8 over x2 minus x1. 0 minus negative 2. Well, 0, 0 minus negative 8 is 8, and 0 minus negative 2 is 2. So we have 8 divided by 2, that's going to be 4. So the average rate of change for the function f of x equals x to the third from x1 being negative 2 to x2 being 0 would be positive 4. All right, so this concludes this particular section on more information regarding the slope.